Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston Station, we're ready for the event. Representative Lamar Smith, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Congressman Lamar Smith. I'm at Fredericksburg High School with 1,000 students in Fredericksburg, Texas. How do you hear me? Congressman Smith, it's outstanding to be with you and be with the great folks from uh, Fredericksburg, Texas. Uh, great to be with you today from the International Space Station and Expedition 35. I hear you loud and clear. This is great. Thank you for being with us. And I'm going to turn the program uh, over uh, to the students who are going to have questions for you. And um, that will occur right now. Again, I'm with 1,000 students, and I hope you appreciate all the support you have from us. You are a hero. and. Uh, we just appreciate everything you're doing for our country. And Brett Williams, if you'll come up, maybe you can introduce your students. Brett Williams. Good morning, Astronaut Cassidy. It's a privilege to speak with an American traveling at over 1,700 miles per hour. I also want to thank you for the services you've provided to this country. At this time, I'm not going to take any more time on our schedule. I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to students from Fredericksburg High School's STEM Academy. Um, hi, my name is Cole Reynolds. Thank you very and, uh, much. Thank you very much. <laughs> my, my question for you was, um, what steps are needed to become an astronaut? Like from college, where do you go from there? Yeah, Cole, great question. So first and foremost, my opinion, you need to be a nice person. We want to fly in space with folks that we enjoy being with, but um, that simply isn't enough to get you here. Uh, what you need to start out doing is probably what you're doing right now by being part of the STEM Academy, studying hard, do, uh, learning lessons both academically and lessons in life that you, other, other mentors uh, around you teach. And then you do need to have a bachelor, at least a bachelor's degree in a technical field. Um, many astronauts have a master's degree or some folks were in military aviation. Those are sort of the key tracks to go to get to the astronaut corps. However, we have folks from all professions in life, uh, doctors, a veterinarian, school teachers, uh, Navy folks like myself, other services. So it's really what I like to tell folks is do what you enjoy doing and what because when you do something that you enjoy, you do it well. And that's the first cut at becoming an astronaut is we'll take people that are successful and do things well in their chosen field. And then we want nice people. Hello, my name is uh, Hunter Fries. I'm a senior and I'm a member of the Fredericksburg High School STEM Academy. And uh, I was wondering, what is the hardest issue to adjust to while being gone for that long at the ISS? You know, that's an interesting question. Um, there's the, the human part about it. We're, we're regular uh, people and we have families and I have a wife and kids that are, that are there in Houston and I miss them a lot. Um, so that's one challenge when you're gone uh, for a long time, whether it be in space or in the military or if you work in uh, um, oil production and you're off in the middle of nowhere trying to find oil. Any, any long period of time away from your loved ones is hard. Um, and then the other adaptation that's probably a little difficult when you're away like this um, is you live at your workplace, and that takes some getting used to, uh, just in terms of when you, you need to have a place to get away on the weekends and just kind of relax and have some private time. And we do that at the window or list watching movies and things like this. So, so those are probably the two hardest things, getting, uh, you're missing your loved ones and living at your workplace. Hi, I'm Seth Studebaker. I'm a senior here at the high school. I was wondering if you could tell us about some of the research that is being done on the space station. Hi, Seth. Yeah, sure, I'd be glad to. Um, it's interesting. There's many, many, many experiments going on, probably in the over 100, 130 or so. There's an actual number, uh, but it, it varies from time to time. Um, Largely, to a large degree, those experiments are going on without much astronaut intervention. They're on the outside of the space station or in racks or some, things like this that are just continuing on. Many of those we have to 
initiate ourselves by, by the astronauts, and then they continue, and some of which we're a part of ourselves. We're the subjects. For instance, er, uh, er, yesterday, Tom Marshburn and, and myself were doing ultrasounds of, of spine, spinal ultrasounds to see about bone. Uh, it's all part of a bone uh, study that's ongoing with many different experiments. We, have, we eat certain diets and take our, our urine and blood samples to see how the, the different diets affect um, ourselves and things like this. Um, material science, there's several material science experiments going on outside as well as earlier today, just right before this conference, I was doing a, uh, an experiment called BASS in which we're testing the combustion properties and flammability properties of different um, substances with various conditions. So many, many, many things going on and uh, on any given day, it's a fun part about our job. We could be doing any one of those things. Hello, I'm Jacob Dittmer. I'm a senior, uh, a senior in the STEM Academy. My question is, what is the extent of the demineralization of human bones during a typical stay on the ISS? You know, that's, that's a really important question for, for those of us that fly in space because it's our personal health that we care about long term, and we have uh, a team of doctors that also care uh, about that a lot as well. And if what we've learned is if you do nothing, if you do no exercise and, and just sit back and, and let the six months pass in zero gravity, you'll have a significant um, bone density loss. Those numbers vary from person to person and what your diet is and what your exact activity level has been. Um, but the fact is you would have a significant loss. So what do we do to prevent that? Basically, strength training. Resistive exercise training is the number one thing we can do, and we need to put load on our bone structure every single day, and the large, large kind of hip down to your thigh, you really need to put um, some load in there so that the bones get used to have, don't get too accustomed to zero gravity and get used to having that normal stresses that they have. Um, and that, if you do that right, in eat well, we've learned that you can really mitigate the bone density loss uh, almost to nothing. Some folks have come back with node loss and others just very minor. So I think we're converging on a solution to keep our bones healthy in space. Hi, I'm Sierra Dreyer and I'm another senior here in the rocket program. And I want to know, when you're not busy working or finding, figuring out big discoveries, what do you do for entertainment up there? Well, Sierra, just like what we do, our interests up here are pretty much the same as what, what we have on Earth, except there's one big difference, looking out the window. Um, we have this place called the cupola, which is this magnificent 360-degree window that's in our node 3. It looks right down at the planet. That's probably the number one thing that we, um, uh, as a crew, enjoy doing is, is spend time in the cupola and just look at the Earth and look at the cities at night. And you can see I-10, for instance, connecting San Antonio and Houston. And the fun part is, think about how many of you have probably driven from San Antonio to Houston. In that, in that three hour-ish time frame, we've gone around the world two times. And so that gives us an opportunity to see a lot of the planet. Um, and then, of course, we also do the normal things, watch movies, read a book, talk to each other, enjoy meals, um, international meals with our Russian crewmates down in the Russian, in Russian end of the space station. So it's, uh, it's those type of things that we do. But the looking out the window, you just can't replace that. My name is Jonathan Ivers, and I'm a junior here at FHS. And my question is, what is the importance of space exploration to our world today? That's a big question, um, Jonathan. I think that, uh, you know, the humans as a whole are by nature explorers. That's how come we live in, the United, in America and we're not stuck in Europe. Uh, bold explorers set out to go search for another part of the world. And eventually, we are going to do the same thing with space exploration. It probably, in, in my time as an active astronaut, we're not going to be marching around with colonies of people on another planet, and maybe not even when you guys are astronauts, but your children perhaps uh, in another generation, who knows how long, but will, there'll be other people um, living 
in on in other place besides the planet Earth. And um, it's the lessons that we're learning right now on how to design, build, construct the critical systems that it takes to sustain life in those locations that will allow us to do that in generations from now. Hi, my name is Daniel Wynn, and I'm a junior at the STEM Academy. And my question is, um, how is it showering on the ISS? I hate to tell you, Daniel, but we don't shower on the ISS. It's a good thing that this is video only and you can't smell us. But uh, no, I'm, I'm somewhat joking. We don't have a shower, but we stay remarkably clean. Um, we use baby wipes uh, for most of, uh, you know, just cleaning ourselves. And we do have some, you know, we can take hot water and get a bar of soap and kind of um, rub it around a little bit. It's, you don't want to use too much soap because it's difficult to get it off. There's no running water to, to wash it all away. But cleaning our teeth and flossing, that's all normal. So I, I feel pretty clean each day. So we're, we, remarkably, without a shower, um, we're not too bad off. Hello, my name is Brian Hafner. I'm a junior in my third year in the STEM Academy. And my question for you is, what is the highest stressful situation you've experienced while you've been in your time on the ISS? Well, I think uh, three years as a junior would be pretty stressful. No, no I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, you know, that's an interesting question because it's such a fun place to be, and my crewmates are so delightful to be around that it's really a stretch to um, define a stressful thing. But the one thing we do know is that we are one failure away in some um, system on the space station from having a stressful day and we have a lot of training in Houston and Russia and other parts of the world that participate in our training where we know how to react in the event uh, of a problem. The biggest ones are a fire, a depressurization, or we have some ammonia fluid um, that helps keep the thermal systems in equilibrium. If the ammonia leaks, that could be bad as well. So, so we know how to respond to that. I think that um, there is one mantra that we have on the space station, and that is that there's no, nothing more important than what you're doing right now. Uh, because at that, any moment, we could do something that could impact a system that could then ha either cause a problem right away or, or have follow-on effects to another problem that we would ultimately have to deal with an emergency. So um, I think the most, to answer your question more specifically, the most stressful thing is knowing that every minute of every day you could do something that could hurt the space station. And, uh, and that in and of itself is a little stressful, but we have a really great ground team uh, in mission control that, that supports all that, and they write fantastic procedures, and it's our job just to execute those procedures that are really well written. Hi, I'm Kate Otmers, and I'm a junior here at the STEM Academy. And the question I would like to ask is, what are your experiences with living so closely with people from different countries? You know, it's actually a real treat to do that, and I highly recommend it, because with that comes the learning of other cultures. And um, um, English is the language uh, that we communicate with to the ground, but with amongst each other, uh, it's a mix of Russian and English. We all study Russian uh, uh, for a long time before we fly in space, and same with our Russian cosmonauts, they stu study English. Um, but neither of us are perfect in, in either language, so uh, heck, I'm hardly perfect in English. So um, we have this really mix of English and Russian as we communicate, and we learn about their cultures and traditions, uh, mostly around food and getting together and this sort of thing uh, as they learn about ours. Uh, that's one of the real treats about about spaceflight. In fact, anything in life fun is not, it's not so much the event itself that's significant, but it's really who you experience that amazing, memorable, fun thing with. And uh, that's how I describe this time up here on the space station is with just enjoying my crewmates from, from Canada, the U.S., and uh, and in Russia, it's just been a fantastic time. Hi, my name is Anissa Kanazi, and I'm a junior 
in the STEM Academy, and I was wondering what is the most unique experience you've had on the ISS? Ah, well, um, let's see. I've been to the space station before, in three years ago, or uh, in a little over three years ago in 2009, um, but it's changed since then. Uh, we've added this node three and cupola that I mentioned earlier. So I would say the most significant um, event is having the opportunity to sit in the cupola and watch and, and just watch the Earth go by. And along the same lines, we had the Russians had a spacewalk a week or two a, a weeks ago, and because of where the hatches are and where their airlock is, myself and Sasha Masurkin had to spend uh, the bo the whole time of that spacewalk inside our Soyuz module, and uh, and that was a really neat time for me. There was we were forced to sit still and just look out the window, uh, talk to each other and enjoy the time without the pressures of, uh, of work to be done. So that stands out in my mind as a really memorable uh, event too, is, is, uh, is during that Russian spacewalk. Hi, my name is Dot Walt. I'm a sophomore in the STEM Academy. And I was going to ask, how is the ISS impacted by orbital debris? Well, that's a fantastic question. Um, so it's a big sky, and so you'd think, how can you possibly run into anything up here? But in fact, there's orbital debris all over the place, as you well know by asking this question. And uh, there's, there's different places on the ground that can keep track of, to a certain size particle, um, on the different things that we might be in danger by. And when they get within a certain range, We'll do a maneuver to move, adjust our orbital altitude so that to put us in a place that has less of a probability of impacting that item. But there's some things that, that perhaps the people can't track or just a surprise. Um, and, and, um, and then there, you know, that would be a bad day if we had to deal with that. And that's why we go through that emergency training. But the space station is ca quite capable of, of um, maneuvering out of the way of those uh, objects. Joseph Mohan, a sophomore in the STEM Academy. Um, we'd all like to see you do a front tuck. I, I didn't hear you, Joseph. Can you say that again? I said we'd like to see you do a front tuck. Oh, no problem. Here you go. Good thing the Good tough thing Russian judges are down eating lunch. Uh, Chris, that was the last question. Thank you again for your time today, and uh, thank you for being a hero to all of us. Thank you very much for your time, and maybe sometime when I get back to the planet, I can come visit Fredericksburg in person and share my experiences with you. Thank you very much, Congressman Smith. Uh, have a great day, everybody. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you. That concludes our event. Thank you, Representative Smith and Fredericksburg High School Station. We are now resuming operational audio communication.